No Sudden Move, the brand new crime period heist caper environmental parable film by Steven Soderbergh is now streaming on HBO Go and we got the chance to sit down with two of its stars, David Harbour and Frankie Shaw for a conversation about their respective roles in the movie. Check it out. Untrustworthy. Frankie, David, it's an absolute pleasure. Uh, David, it's good to see you again. I was one of the, you know, hundreds of roundtables you probably had yesterday for Black Widow. I remember your <laughs> impressive bookcase, though. Oh, my. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this this usually eats up about 30 seconds of any interview. Uh, I know. I want to <laughs> ask you what your favorite book is, but I don't know. It, it's like asking to pick children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's talk No Sudden Move. David, there is this nervous energy about your character Matt that is very uncomfortable to watch and it really comes through but it's very different from many of your recent roles I mean Hellboy Extraction Black Widow Stranger Things you play characters that kind of command any room that they walk into and Matthew feels different and I was wondering about getting into the mind of this character and your inspirations for this role oh have we lost David has he frozen oh yeah I can ask you a question, though, Frankie, while okay. we wait. <laughs> well, for David to get into his role. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I won't answer for David. Okay, no, no. We'll wait for David to come back. But Oh, uh, hey, oh wait. Hey, that was back. Uh, I guess my internet just crapped out there for a second. Wait. Uh, it did. It's like, okay, I'm back now, I think. So I play these, oh, like, confident go. roles. What's it like? Yeah, to like a different type? Correct. Really, really imposing characters. Yes. But yes. Matthew feels like he's yes. like in that scene when you're beating up your boss and you're just like, I'm going to punch you now. It's brilliant. That's great. This is going to be a punch. Yes. He's a very different guy than Hopper doesn't say, doesn't ask permission to punch you ever. Um, <laughs> he, uh, you know, it's great to be able to have both. I have to say, you know, there's really no preference on which I guess there's a bit of a preference. If I only could choose one, I'd rather play guys are a little more you know with it and all that stuff but i just love human beings and all their multi multifarious whatever so i i like different people and i find beauty in different types of expression of that and i mean i think matt is a beautifully tragic person i don't know if i i certainly don't admire him i mean i feel like he's a guy who has who has this idea of himself and then has himself and they're often at conflict. He, always, he often chooses the idea of himself as opposed to who he actually is. And so that right. annoys me about Matt, but I also find it quite beautiful in the sense that there are so many people that do that. And I have done that at times in my life. So yeah, it's a very different approach that I took with this guy, but also like, that's the great thing about human beings. Like you can, you know, you can find so many different ways to express this, this weird trip that we're all on. Mm -hmm. Um, Frankie, I feel that female roles in these crime noirs are the hardest to pull off because a lot of the time you don't necessarily spend much time with the characters, but they're also the kind of epitome of still waters run deep. And uh, what can you tell me about kind of fleshing out Paula and how you saw her as a character? Because she has a couple of turns throughout this film mm -hmm. that are really fun. Yeah, I think that a lot of times these movies are written with characters, female characters that are truly, truly the object. You know, they're the girlfriend or they're the long suffering fill in the blank. And what was so great is that all three of the women have complicated relationships and feelings and are and embody those feelings. You know, they're not written at an arm's distance. They're written as people who you really understand what their lived experience is. And then um, getting to play her and having, you know, these three scenes, but then having sort of mini arcs within the scenes, it just felt very representative of like a woman of the era who feels trapped, but has a way out, an idea of an, a way out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when it comes to shooting during a pandemic must have been very different from your regular productions. I guess you don't get to hang out with people you don't share a scene with. And what was that like with your process as actors? I mean, did that get in the way or was it just work as usual when, you know, 
from when they cut, cut action to cut. I asked Steven if Benicio could play David's part, <laughs> but he said no. So sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but the, it was it was funny though. Like it was good and bad because I mean I've been all I've been doing is complaining about the COVID protocols <laughs> that we had in place because I hate them so much and I hate the fact that I can't have like some sound guy come to adjust my mouth while he puts his sandwich like in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that wasn't happening. But why, yeah. Exactly. That wasn't happening. But what did happen was we were stuck in a hotel together because we were in a right. bubble. Right. And we had to kind of when we were there, we kind of had to be there. So in a lot of sets like, you know, Benicio and I wouldn't really hang out as much except to work. But but here we were kind of forced to and even characters that you didn't know or whatever. We all got up in that upper bar area that was sequestered for us at night and had dinner. And so the crew, the cast. In a way, there was an intimacy that I had never really had on a film as well. Which is what I loved about it. Yeah. That, no, that, that, that's nice to hear, actually, because for a COVID production, it doesn't feel like a COVID production. I guess doing a period piece as well during COVID, you, I still had that scale. I still felt yeah, that there, scale. I tell you, the worst, the scariest day for me, though, because you know that we're all tested so much, you know? And right. so there's a safety in that. You're tested. You're all doing the protocols, all stuff. And then there was one day where Matt Wirtz walks through the lobby of the building to go upstairs and walking through that lobby. It was a crazy day where you show up, you're getting ready to go. Everybody's in masks and everything. And you're and you're about ready to go. And they like roll camera. All right, everybody masks off. And there's like 300 extras in this room together. And everybody right. takes the mask off. And it was like, <laughs> oh, like, OK, roll. <laughs> let's go quick. I mean, things like that, which I never, you know, you don't yeah. Uh, I've got to wrap, uh, but but David, I feel like we're friends now, and you can tell me something, <laughs> tell me something about Stranger Things season four. <laughs> oh man, oh man. Well, does that mean you'll <laughs> lend me fifty bucks? Because uh, that's what my friends do for me. I uh, FedEx it to you. Yeah, yeah. Stranger Things season four. I mean, it's gonna be great. You know, the only problem is I wish we could get it to people sooner because I know that fans out there have been waiting for it. But it takes time to make things that are really beautiful and these brothers really like to take their time and pour over it mm -hmm. it's bigger than anything we've ever done it's scarier than anything we've ever done and also it goes into the intimate backstories of a lot of these characters you've grown to love and certainly hopper is someone who is being resurrected this season in a sense i mean he's gone from being a cop to being a prisoner he's learning about these other aspects of him li as his life and we're going to see these things like in the in the attic or in the basement when she finds the file, when Eleven finds the file, she sees some other boxes in there with things on them, like, you know, things on them. You can go look it up and figure out what those things are. We're going to go into a lot of what those things are and how they shape how he's going to move himself forward. By, uh, and so it's beautiful. It's quite beautiful. I'm, I'm loving playing it. And I again, it's one of these things where I just can't wait for people to see it. I know you're going to like love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, very cool. I'm looking forward to it. Guys, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. No sudden move. It's Chef's Kiss. Great. Thanks, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Why are you doing this, man? Because I'm going to get what's mine. We hope you enjoyed that conversation. Don't forget to check out our other videos right here on YouTube. Also, like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, you know the usual. And if you've seen No Sudden Move, sound off in the comments below and tell us what you thought about the film. We really loved it.